India is set to surpass China as a global superpower, and nothing in the world can stop it. At least that's the headline being trumpeted by some fairly strong sources. Foreign policy makes the case that India is on its way to superpower status because it's outpaced China's GDP growth over the last two years. India has hit on average of 6.1% growth versus China's 4.5%. Not bad given that most people view China as the next superpower. The Guardian also points out that India is slowly climbing the superpower rankings. In 2022, it reported India managed to overtake the UK as the world's fifth biggest economy, showing again that India is on the economic rise. But is a good economy enough to make India a superpower? More importantly, is it enough to help India surpass China, the greatest rival for superpower status? We'd argue that it isn't, and we could come up with 10 reasons why India is going to stay in China's shadow when it comes to its superpower status. Number 10. Nuclear Capacity Starting with a bang, almost literally, is how India stacks up to China when it comes to its nuclear arsenal. Both India and China have nukes. They're two of the nine nations that possess them. But when it comes to the sheer size of their stockpiles, China is leagues ahead of India. According to the Arms Control Association (ACA), India currently has 164 nuclear warheads ready to fire. That almost puts it dead last in the list of nine countries, with only Israel having fewer at 90. As for China, well, it's ahead of India in the nuclear game. Estimates vary on the number of warheads China has in its stockpile. The ACA says 410, as verified by independent experts, which is almost three times more than India. However, an October 2023 report from the Pentagon places the number at above 500, with estimates saying that China is quickly working to increase its stockpiles to the point where it'll have around 1,500 nuclear warheads operational by 2035. At this point, the countries aren't even running the same nuclear race. Where India appears to be trying to stay on course is with Pakistan, its biggest regional rival, and its stock of 170. China has bigger fish to fry. It's not competing with India when it comes to its nuclear arsenal. Instead, it's ramping up production so it can achieve some level of parity with the world's biggest nuclear nations, Russia and the United States. China has a ways to go. Even if it hits 1,500 nukes by 2035, it'll still only have less than a third of what those powerhouses have. But it's still leagues ahead of India in the nuclear game, which means if the countries ever did find themselves at war, China has an immediate advantage simply because it can make much scarier nuclear threats than India. Still, comparing nuclear arsenals is a somewhat primitive way of measuring superpower status. Each country could wipe the other off the map with the nukes it has. So let's take a look at another reason why India won't surpass China. One that suggests India may not be the economic powerhouse some in the media are touting it to be. Number 9. India Won't Become an Economic Powerhouse Yes, India's economy has grown larger than the UK's in recent years, and yes, its GDP growth appears to be outpacing China's, at least in 2021 and 2022. But if we go a little further back in time, we can see that China's strategy for its own growth is superior to India's. The Australian Strategic Policy Institute, or ASPI, points out that both countries benefited from market liberalization during the 20th century to enhance their growth. However, they took different approaches to strengthening that liberalization. China focuses on investing in human capital and gender equality, creating a system in which more of its people are well-educated and enjoy high health standards. Both are factors in maintaining a strong international workforce. By contrast, India's investments in the same areas simply have not kept pace, especially when it comes to gender equality in the workforce. ASPI points out that about 62% of China's female population is employed, compared to just 25% of India's. Part of that comes down to a violence problem. The ASPI notes that violence against women deters many from working in India. Regardless, the end result is that China's total factor productivity TFP growth, a measure of productive efficiency that influences output, far outpaces India, even though China's TFP has slowed down in recent years. None of this suggests that India's economy is weak. It isn't. But with China's intelligent investments in human capital, coupled with the pace of its scientific advancements, it seems unlikely that India is going to leapfrog China economically in the long run. In the simplest terms, China and its people will almost always have more money available than India. All of this means that China has an advantage when it comes to money and nukes. Now let's take things down to a more regional level and examine an interesting conflict that India needs to resolve before it can truly focus on surpassing China. Number 8. Maoist Insurgencies Causing Trouble In 1920, a small communist movement started in India as a response to Britain's occupation of the country. Though anti-colonial in nature, this movement planted the seeds of Marxism in the small southern state of Andhra Pradesh. 
Even when India achieved its independence in 1947, the seeds continued to grow, creating a small but dedicated population of people with communist leanings in India. It didn't take too long for those communists to rebel against the powers that be in India. This all started in a small Naxalbari village in 1967. A farmer was supposedly prevented from tilling his land by the authorities, resulting in an uprising that was only put down after 72 days. Around five years later, the concept of Naxalism, a form of left-wing extremism named after the small village region, was in full force. India's authorities tried to subjugate its communist elements, but it wasn't long before the Naxalism movement aligned its philosophies with the Maoists. Groups started forming, including the Maoist Communist Center and the People's War Group, both of which created internal struggles within India. Heading into the 2000s, India's growing communist sects started causing some real damage. Maoist attacks killed 217 police officers, soldiers, and security personnel between 2007 and 2010, with the overall intention of these groups being to capture state power through a people's war. Inspired loosely by that conducted by Mao Zedong, China's famous revolutionary leader. Why is any of this important? Some, including the Wilson Center, have called these Maoist insurgencies the gravest threat posed to India's internal security. Not only does India have internal threats that don't exist in China, but those threats are influenced by the former leaders of the very country that it's trying to surpass as a superpower. It's not outside the realm of possibility, then, that India's Maoist groups could align with China in the future, essentially acting as an insider paramilitary group to further China's ambitions inside India. Indian Defense Review even goes so far as to call these Maoists China's proxy soldiers. And if these proxies manage to keep causing trouble inside India, they'll help to distract the country away from China and its efforts to develop a stronger foothold against its continental neighbor. Speaking of regional strife, our fourth reason why India won't surpass China as a superpower is all about what's going on in nearby and neighboring countries. Number 7. Political Tensions with Neighboring Countries no matter what it tries, India can't seem to end the many disputes it has with its neighboring countries. China is one of them. For decades, India and China have been fighting over the Line of Actual Control, or LAC, a 2,100-mile stretch of disputed borderlands between the two countries that has led to several physical disputes, clashes between troops stationed on either side of the LAC. Both countries are building infrastructure to defend their positions. With India's creation of a high-altitude airbase in 2020, highlighted by the BBC as the reason for a clash that led to the deaths of 20 Indian soldiers. Tensions continue to boil over the LAC. But if that was the only regional issue that India faced, it could at least compete with China directly over this border in peace. But it isn't. Beyond India's LAC-based tensions with China, the country is involved in a near-constant dispute with its biggest neighbor, Pakistan. The countries entered a full-blown war in 1965, with another smaller war over East Pakistan in 1971 ushering in the Simla Agreement a year later. That agreement created the Line of Control, or LOC, a military control line that essentially divided the Kashmir region into two, and India and Pakistan have been nipping at each other over Kashmir ever since. Unrest is common on the Indian side of the LOC, with India accusing Pakistan of poking the hornet's nest by offering its backing to militant groups that want to establish a separate Kashmiri state. Pakistan denies this, of course, but there's no denying that a separate Kashmir would benefit Pakistan. After India's Bharatiya Janata Party, or BJP, revoked Article 370, a constitutional clause that essentially gave India's side of Kashmir autonomy, in 2019, these clashes with separatists are only likely to intensify. That's not the end of India's regional woes. Though the country has always been fairly tightly allied with Bangladesh, India was the first nation to recognize Bangladesh as an independent state. They've also been in constant conflict over the Ganges River. When India built the Faraka Barrage, it created multiple climate issues in Bangladesh, including increased flooding and exacerbation of the country's dry season. Of course, China is no stranger to regional conflict itself, especially with Taiwan. But all of India's conflicts weaken it as it works towards superpower status. If China is smart enough to take advantage of these tensions by positioning itself as an ally to Pakistan and Bangladesh, as well as reinforcing its own position on the LAC, it could put a severe dent into India's growth. But it's not just regional issues that China could take advantage of. Even the loose economic alliance that China and India have is faltering due to recent circumstances. Number 6. China's Growing Influence Within BRICS in 2009, Brazil, Russia, India, and China came together to form a loose economic alliance designed to help countries that aren't part of the traditional Western power structure to succeed. 
A year later, South Africa joined the fold, forming the BRICS Group. Both India and China have benefited substantially from this group when it comes to growing their economies. However, 2024 saw BRICS add six new members – Iran, Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, the UAE, and Saudi Arabia – to form what some in the media are calling BRICS Plus. That is bad news for India's ambitions as a superpower. Expansion of the BRICS groups serves China's ambitions far more than it serves India. The most obvious point to make here is that the inclusion of so many countries that have anti-West sentiments, Iran being the biggest, creates a more us-versus-them mentality than had previously existed in BRICS. That's ideal for China. It's been leaning more heavily into anti-West rhetoric in recent years. But for India, a nation that's tried to maintain strong relationships on both sides of the fence, increasing anti-West sentiment inside BRICS places it in a traditional position. The country may have to leave the group to maintain its relationship with the United States and other Western powers, leading it to losing out on the economic support that BRICS provides. CNN also reported on the power imbalance that BRICS expansion could create. According to Yun Sun, who's the director of the Stimson Center's China program, expansion could lead to dilution of the BRICS agenda. He says the more members there are, the more interests the organization needs to reconcile and accommodate. India could find it on the losing end of that reconciliation. As BRICS expands by welcoming more countries that want to upset the global political power balance, India could be left as the odd man out, a country that wants true balance in an organization that's moving further away from the West. Its voice in BRICS, already diminished by the addition of the new members, could become silent if China can align the new and existing members behind its own economic and regional policies. Score another point for China in its battle against India. Still, there are factors beyond China's clever power plays that could prevent India from surpassing it as a superpower. And interestingly, one of these factors brings us back to India's economy. Number 5. The Subsistence Farming Issue On the surface, India's farming sector seems to be one of the key drivers behind its economic growth. That was highlighted in 2022 when the country's agricultural exports surpassed $50 billion for the first time, demonstrating growth of 19.92% between 2021 and 2022. But dig a little deeper and you see two issues. First, as impressive as India's agricultural growth may be, China's is even better. According to Statista, China's agricultural exports also reached record levels in 2022, topping out at $98.26 billion, almost twice that achieved by India. In fact, China's been exporting more of those types of products than India's $50 billion record since 2011 showing that India is playing catch-up to China on the agricultural front. However, the second and much more damaging issue that India simply isn't taking advantage of is the vast swaths of farmland available to it. Trading Economics points out that 51.95% of India is arable land, or land that's suitable for farming, which should place it in a great position to be an agricultural powerhouse. After all, India is a massive country. However, the Food and Agriculture Organization FAO, points out that 82% of the nation's farmers are subsistence farmers, meaning they only grow food for their own consumption. Around 70% of India's families rely on agriculture for their livelihoods, with very few of those families actually exporting the crops they grow. The FAO points out that this focus on subsistence farming means that India has achieved agricultural self-sufficiency, which is a major point in its favor for superpower status. However, due to farming being mostly regional and resource-intensive, sustainability issues are a massive concern that prevents India from reaching its full economic potential on the agricultural export front. In short, most of India's population relies on farming to live, but India itself isn't seeing massive economic benefits from its agricultural activity. It could even be heading toward an agricultural apocalypse if it doesn't make an effort to develop widespread sustainable practices. So India's agricultural system, despite being self-sufficient, is below modern standards, and that isn't the only area in which the country falls short. Number 4. Below Standard Infrastructure India's population is exploding. According to the United Nations, the country's population reached 1.425 billion and change in April 2023 bringing it level with China, and it has only continued to grow to the point where there are more people in India than China right now. If superpower status were judged on population alone, then India would be at the top of the pile, but it isn't. And India's rapidly growing population is causing more problems than it's solving, especially on the infrastructural level. Transport, energy, sanitation, education, digital capacity, these are all infrastructural issues for which India is lagging far behind China. 
and despite the country's Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, making huge investments in these areas, there's no denying that much of India's infrastructure is antiquated and unfit for its people, especially in more urban areas. Worse yet, much of India's modernization efforts are being overseen by private companies that are pocketing huge amounts of money in exchange for their admittedly fruitful efforts. Take Mumbai as an example, the city which is just six times larger than central Paris according to Yahoo News, hosts 20 million people. The rapid urbanization of that city has led to a clear divide between its poor and its elite. Rents are soaring sky high, and slums are developing at a rapid pace, making India's approach to developing its infrastructure one that may alienate millions of its people. By contrast, China has committed to pumping a trillion dollars into its infrastructure, according to a 2022 report from Bloomberg, meaning it's achieving modernization at a much faster rate than India. Where much of India is still below standard, China is emerging as a leader in infrastructural development. And that leadership isn't only on display at home. China's taking its infrastructure work global with the Belt and Road Initiative BRI, which has the potential to give it far more regional influence than India could ever hope to wield. Number 3. China's regional influence is growing much faster than India's On the surface, the BRI is a seemingly unselfish project. The gist is, China delivers loans to underpowered countries, with those countries working alongside China to develop massive infrastructural projects that they wouldn't be able to complete alone. It's all very generous, and China's seen a massive influx of nations that want to take advantage of its loans. According to the Council of Foreign Relations, or CFR, a staggering 147 countries have either secured BRI loans or are interested in doing so. That accounts for about two-thirds of the global population. However, China has more sinister intentions behind the BRI. Beijing's geopolitical ambitions are made clear when you examine the wording of many of its BRI contracts. According to CFR, one study analyzed 100 of those contracts and found that most contain clauses that are extremely favorable to China and potentially damaging to India. Take the clause that bars any of China's BRI debtors from seeking to restructure or consolidate their loans with the Paris Club as an example. This group, of which India is a part, could offer a way out for nations that find China's loan conditions too difficult to meet. But they don't have that recourse, which means India has no way to get in on the BRI action through the back door. Even more worrying is the clause that says China has the right to demand repayment of its BRI loans at any time. It's yet to exercise this clause, but it's a dangerous piece of language at any point. China could use it to demand payment from countries that don't have the money. That would play right into China's hands. It could use the debt leverage it's created to establish bases within those countries in exchange for all the infrastructure it's built. Thus, China's regional presence grows stronger, easily surpassing that of India's. For its part, India has already come out against the BRI. It was the only member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, an intergovernmental group focused on building regional relationships in Asia, to voice opposition when plans were first proposed in 2018. That isn't going to help it much. China forged ahead with the BRI anyway, and it's built so many regional ties that it could theoretically surround India if the nations ever went to war, and that regional lockout could cause more problems for India on the energy front, leading us to our penultimate reason why India can't surpass China as a superpower. Number 2. India depends on foreign energy even more than China Both India and China are highly dependent on foreign energy, but India is far more dependent than China and that dependency is likely only going to grow worse in the future. According to the International Trade Association, India is the third largest consumer and net importer of crude in the world, as it imports more than 80% of the oil it uses. Expanding the scope to all types of energy, India lands fifth overall and will likely rise to third by 2030, behind only the United States and China. The Wilson Center points out that India's dependence on foreign oil will rise to 90%, according to the U.S. Department of Energy projections, meaning it would face an energy crisis were it ever to enter a conflict with China. Of course, China's situation isn't much better. The China Power Project says that 67.3% of the country's crude oil supply came from foreign sources in 2019, with that number likely to rise closer to 80% by 2040. That would put it on par with India right now, but below future projections for the country. But more worrying for India on that front is that China has an increasingly strong alliance with Russia, one of the world's major oil producers. India cooperates with Russia too, 
However, that relationship is slowly being strained by India's seeming lack of interest in joining in with the anti-West rhetoric that both Russia and China espouse. It's not outside of the realms of possibility that the future may see Russia choosing China ahead of India for oil exports, placing India in a bad position. In the worst case scenario, China could also leverage its BRI infrastructure to essentially cut India off from many other possible suppliers, creating an energy crisis in the process. Combine all of that with China's wind and solar projects, The Guardian says it's on course to reach its 2030 goals by 2035, and you get a country that has stronger ties to oil-producing nations while doing more than India to bring energy production, quote, in-house. That's worrying for India. But it's not as worrying as the final reason why India can't surpass China as a superpower. Its military simply isn't strong enough. Number 1. China's military outpaces India's in almost every way. When it comes to military might, China is leagues ahead of India. We've already covered the nuclear situation, but China has around 550,000 more active duty military personnel than India, according to Global Firepower. It also spends a lot more about $230 billion per year compared to India's $54.2 billion, and beats India on practically every level on the equipment front. China has more planes, tanks, armored vehicles, and ships. India's left in the dust almost every time. The only areas where it comes out on top are its contingent of reservist troops, 1.15 million to China's 510,000, and its paramilitary forces. In the case of the latter, India has around 1.9 million more people who are part of paramilitary forces, but given that these groups aren't official parts of India's army, they're simply not as reliable as its active military personnel. India has a powerful military, one of the most powerful in the world, but it still can't compete with China, which is far more focused on strengthening itself. So combine all of this military power with China's clever regional efforts, especially through the BRI, and you get a country that's stronger in a fight than India. Add to that the strengthening ties to other anti-West nations that China is creating through the expansion of BRICS, as well as its more modern infrastructure and stronger economic policies, and the situation only gets worse for India. India isn't in a position to surpass China as a global superpower, even with its surface-level economic growth superiority, and China has been very clever in ensuring that that's the case with its regional efforts and military buildup. All we know is that if the two nations ever went to war, our money would be on China coming out on top. But what do you think? Are we underestimating India as a superpower, or has China managed to successfully cut it off at every turn? Tell us what you think below. Now go ahead and check out this video, or maybe this one instead.